By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I've got a nice, exciting game for you, two original decks. I'm playing against a powered up Enchanters deck and I am bringing a black and green deck to the table that I've called Evil Storm. Now before I go into the deck deck, I would just like to mention that there is a timestamp below. If you click on the timestamp, that will take you straight to game number one, so you can skip the deck deck if you want to. Now if you stick around here, we are going to start with the deck deck and we're going to start with the deck of Yoop. And here we see the deck of Yoop, or actually we see a few cards of his deck because I don't have a deck picture unfortunately. I played this game a while back. Uh, so it was hard for my opponent to kind of find his deck picture and that's not a problem because um, You know, I can show you some of the key cards and I can explain the main idea uh, of this deck And of course it is for Jiren Enchantress. So for Jiren Enchantress, for people that don't know, it's two green and one to cast for an O2 For Jiren Enchantress, summon Enchantress and while Enchantress is in play You may immediately draw a card from your library each time you cast an Enchantment. So when you play with Fijuran Enchantress, it makes sense that you're playing with some enchantments. Now, some of the more interesting enchantments in this deck I feel are Wild Growth because it's a way to ramp up and play his bigger creatures. You can see two of his bigger, buffy, beefy creatures next uh, next to the Wild Growth, actually Force of Nature and Urnum Jin. So if he can get a Fijuran out with, of course, the Moxin, maybe turn two Fijuran, possibly even a turn one then uh, turn to Wild Growth, you know, he can start drawing extra cards and then maybe turn three or turn four, he can start playing out bigger creatures. So that's, of course, um, you know, a threat for me and that's part of his plan, I think, to ramp into big creatures and at the same time, keep filling his hands because he's playing a lot of enchantments in the process. So of course you see Sylvan Library here, uh, which is allowing him to draw cards and also allows him to kind of sort his deck to make sure that enchantments are on top, allowing him to draw even more cards. So Sylvan and Fajuran, I think it's a really nice combination. And then he's also playing with the color white. So he's got some white control in here and he's chosen to go for Spirit Link, of course, um, and the power of Spirit Link is that it's an enchantment and, you know, it can utilize a creature. But what it can also do, because he's playing with Force of Nature, he can also put it on his own Force of Nature. And then he can choose not to pay for the upkeep cost. Because the nice thing about Force of Nature is that if you don't pay the four green during your upkeep, you get eight damage, but the creature does not tap itself, so he can still attack. Now, of course, with Spirit Link, he gets eight damage, and after that, he, he gains eight life. Now, this is important. It's not like Life Link. With Life Link, the damage is life. You know, so instead of eight damage, you gain eight life. But with Spirit Link, it's different. With Spirit Link, you first get the damage, and then you get the life. That means if your your life total is eight, you go down to zero and then you're dead before you can get the eight life. So that's an important difference. So playing with Spirit Link on Force of Nature is also like playing with fire, uh, which is funny because both of these cards are not red, but still it's it's a risky thing to do. So, uh, but it works, you know, it works. And then of course there's Urnum Jin. I mean, four mana for a four or five, what's not to like about this card? Now, to make Enchantress work, I think that my opponent has chosen to just go all in and say, you know what, I'm gonna play with blue power because if I wanna make Fajuran work, I need some blue power. And actually, he's got the Tropical Islands, he's got the City of Brasses, so he doesn't even need any basic islands. One of the things that I think is so ridiculously good about the blue power is that their casting cost is all one blue. It is so easy to splash these cards in your deck. If you've got four City of Brasses, and you've got four dual lands that also produce a blue source, you already have eight sources and, and you're kind of home free. If you also have a Mock Sapphire in there, it's even better. So you don't really need to change much in your deck to play with the three blue power cards. That's why they're just ridiculously good. So overall, just to recap, this is an Enchantress deck, but I mean, it looks pretty strong to me. So Enchantress with beefy big creatures, and blue power, I mean, that sounds strong to me. I'm really curious to see how my deck will do. Talking about my deck, let's take a look at my deck. And here we see the deck that I am playing with today. And uh, as you can see, this is a land destruction deck. So basically I've got Elves of Deep Shadow, which is, you know, one green, you can tap for one black. You do get a damage, but you can tap for one black. So the idea here is, 
uh, you know, play Elves of Deep Shadow and then turn two, play an Ice Storm. Now, if I cannot do that, then hopefully I have a Black Source in my opening hand and I can turn two, play a Sinkhole to destroy a land. So I'm really going for that land removal plan. And because, um, you know, we're playing old school, so we've got Moxin, we've got Mana Rocks, we've got all sorts of artifacts that can generate land for our opponents. I'm also playing with a full play set of Crumbles. So with the Crumbles, I want to take out the Moxin. I want to take out, you know, possibly a Black Lotus, forcing my opponent to use it on something they really don't want to. So the, the Crumbles are really in there to also attack the Mana Base. So I've got in total 12 cards to attack the Mana Base. I've got my uh, Elves of Deep Shadow as a ramp, and then I also play with four Hypnotic Spectres. Now, you're probably wondering, why is he playing with Hypnotic Spectres and he's playing with Evil Eyes? Because for people that don't know, Evil Eye of Orms by Gore is a 3-6 creature from Legends, and it reads, Evil Eyes of Orm by Gore can only be blocked by walls, and when the Evil Eye is in play, only Evil Eyes can actually attack. So if I have a scenario where I've got a Hypnotic Spectre in play and I have an Evil Eye in play, I actually cannot attack with my Hippie. So my Hypnotic can do nothing. So you're probably thinking, okay, then why play with Hypnotic Spectre? Well, first of all, Hypnotic Spectre is just so good. If I can cast a turn one with the Dark Ritual, which is a classic combo, it's an instant problem for my opponent. My opponent has to have a Swords or a Bolt or, you know, they have to deal with the creature or else they're in serious trouble. Now, if I have um, an Elves of Deep Shadow on the board in turn one, then I can play out my Hypnotic Spectre turn two, which is also pretty good. If my opponent is really low on lands, I can just, you know, probably his hand is going to be full of cards and I can start forcing him to discard every time he draws a new card with my uh, Hypnotic Spectres. Another reason, and that's that I played him next to the Evil Eyes, is that I kind of want to force my opponent to use their creature removal on my Hypnotic Spectres because it's a problem they have to deal with. And then after that, I can play my Evil Eye. My Evil Eye is unblockable and I can just start attacking and swinging in. Now, if I'm in a scenario where I've got, let, let me call it just an active Hypnotic Spectre. And what I mean by that is an Hypnotic Spectre that can attack every turn and I draw into an Evil Eyes, then obviously I'm not gonna draw the, I'm not gonna play out the Evil Eyes until the Hypnotic Spectre has left the board or is no longer useful as an attacker, for example, because my opponent has a really big flyer on board, right? So I can still decide, of course, when I want to cast um, the Evil Eyes of Orms by Gore. So I, I, I think I think it's going to be a good combination. Maybe not, you know what, we'll, we'll find out if I'm right or if I'm wrong. That's, that's what deck building is all about. You try out new things, you see if it works, if it doesn't work, okay, it doesn't work, try out something new, you know, that's, that's the fun of magic. Um, so this is my deck, this is my plan, let's go to the games! Game number one is about to begin. My opponent, Yoop, is sitting on the left, I'm sitting on the right, and it looks like he's begun. Look at that start there with a wild growth, so that means, oh, look at this. This is a dream scenario when you're playing the Hypnotic Spectre. Turn one, Dark Ritual into Hippie. And let's see what my opponent can do. Or, oh, that's, that is a pretty good answer here, Ancestral Recall. Well, actually, it's not really an answer, but, I mean, it is a good card. Let's see if he can find something. He still got, he still has a green floating playing out that Pendlehaven, but it looks like he has nothing, uh, no weapon against my Hippie. That means I can start dealing two damage, and I don't see any dice on the side of my opponent. Uh, ooh, that's pretty good. Mind Twist gone. That is a good feeling. So I guess he's also playing with black. It looks like he's playing with most of the colors. And let's see, tapping four here, taking a damage. And there is a Urnum Jin. That means he's on 17 at the moment. Okay, there we go and see some dice. So he's on 17 and I'm putting my dice in the picture as well. So I'm on 20, my opponent is on 17 and that Urnum is a problem for me. Interestingly enough, I haven't played any land removal which surprises me a little bit because I'm playing with four Ice Storm and four Sinkholes, but sometimes you just don't draw into it. Tapping three here, playing another Hypnotic Spectre. So, I mean, that is a pretty big problem for my opponent. Uh, you know, he, he, he can swing in now for four, uh, giving Force Walk to my untapped Hippie, swinging, going to 16. And there's an Enchantress and tapping two more. And there's a Sylvan Library. And this is a really nice combination because he instantly gets to draw a card 
And uh, next turn, he gets to look at his top three. Probably going to put an enchantment on the top. Ooh, wow. Ashes to... No, it's, it's dust to dust, isn't it? I always mix those two up. Anyway, I remove two creatures from the game, and you take five damage. I go down to 11, but his Fajurian Enchantress and his Urnum Jin are removed from the game. This is brutal. What a beautiful card to play in this matchup. Attacking him for four damage. He's dropping to nine, and he has to discard two cards. Wow, I think it's going to be really hard for you to bounce back here, uh, taking one more damage. Oh, balance! This is pretty sweet. Oh, and now the discarding of the Hypnotic Spectres is going to work against me because I have to discard a lot of cards here. My opponent at least has to... Wow, look at that. I'm even discarding a Demonic Tutor. Wow, then what is in my hand? It's going to be really powerful. Oh! Wow, this is an insane turn. A Time Twister. Oh, man. This is, just, this is crazy. One turn. One turn. I... I, I I was like, okay, you you are as good as dead, as good as dead after that um, dust to dust. But I mean, this is just crazy. Oh man, or is it ashes? I just I don't know. I mixed those two cards up. Leave me alone. I have no idea. Wow, what a turn! Crazy. So drawing seven new cards. Uh, it's at least it's my go again. Playing a Bayou, playing a double elves of deep shadow, and of course. With that Pendlehaven, I can make it a 2-3 next turn, but, I mean, Yoop is completely back into this game, has an active Sylve, and has a full grip of cards in his hand. He's still on 7, which is not too shabby. And look at that, a Library of Alexander. That means he can draw an extra card now, but he's not doing it. Taking a damage, and oh, there's that Mind Twist again, and I thought the Mind Twist was gone. And I have to discard, ay, 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 four cards, only one card in hand now. Oh, actually, okay, it's, uh, oh, I know what happened, I know what happened. Um, for some reason, I thought it wasn't random. So, anyway, but of course it is random. Mind Twist is even better than you think it is. Uh, you don't get to choose what you want to discard. Anyway, um, I can still deal three damage. You're dropping, uh, Yupa's dropping down to three measly life here. Let's see what I can do. Drawing an extra card. He is really low though. I mean, can I win this? Playing an Enchantress, so that at least will allow him to block one creature. And then I can choose if I want to deal damage or if I want to trade with the Pendlehaven. Playing a Savannah. So, I mean, he still has three mana left. Three life, three mana left. What is he going to do? Nothing passing turn here. And let's see, playing a Maze of If, he's going to block. And I think I'm going to pump and... Oh, this is quite nice. In response, playing the uh, Swords to Plowsiers. That means that... Okay, I was actually pumping the Elves that gotten through. So that means he takes no damage. Interesting. I think it would have been better to pump the Elves of Deep Shadow, kind of killing the one that got blocked by the Enchantress. Uh, but I decided not to decide to go for the damage because look at this. Now he can start drawing cards here, playing a Wild Growth on one of his lands, drawing an extra card. Tapping four mana here. And wow, there we see the Urnum with the Spirit Link on it because, of course, he still had that mana floating from the Tropical Island, the Wild Grove land. And playing, tapping even, an, um, I mean, drawing even an extra card. But now my Elves of Deep Shadow is getting Forest Walk. And remember, dual lands also count as uh, the two lands that they represent. So the Savannah, for example, is and a plains and a forest. So my forest walk will work because of that. And tapping two here and... Ooh, Chaos Orb! So he probably is going to flip on my Elves of Deep Shadow. Doesn't have to do it now, though. He can just wait. And I don't have a crumble, it seems. It looks like he's going to flip straight away. Let's see. So he's going to flip. We see the shadow. Oh, it's a miss. Oh, that's an expensive miss. That's an expensive miss. He goes down to two. So I guess he's... Oh, he's going to play... It's hard to see there in the corner, but he's actually playing a demonic tutor. So I guess he's playing something against my elves. Oh, interesting. Playing a mace of if. Now remember, I've got eight land removal cards 
in my deck. Of course, my opponent doesn't know this yet because I've played zero, but I have them in my deck. So if I can find a sinkhole or an ice storm, this is my game because I've got Forest Walk. Ooh, Demonic Tutor. So I guess I'm going to look up sinkhole. Take care of the Maze of If, and I'm going to win this because it can pump my Elves of Deep Shadow with my Pendlehaven. Let's see, what am I going to do here? It looks like I'm taking my time. To me, right now, when I'm looking at this board state, it seems really obvious. Let's see what I'm going to do. Yeah, there is the Sinkhole, and I'm going to attack. And I'm going to pump, and that's it. Okay, this is game number one. Remember, it's only the first game. We are going to go into our sideboards, and then we're going to play game number two. Game number two. So let's see what the Super Enchanters deck can do here. And uh, wow, that was... I like that match. That first game, I mean. I like that first game. That was cool. That was cool. That one turn with uh, Balance into the Time Twister, that was just legendary. That was, that was really, really sweet. Uh, okay, but let's let's see what this uh, what this game will bring us. And we see the Enchantress uh, player here starting with a Birds of Paradise. That means we have a possible Enchantress on uh, on turn number two. And again, whoa, this is highly unlikely. I guess I'm really lucky here again finding a Hypnotic Specter. And uh, wow, at least at least you know the power is really helping the Enchantress player here to do something back here, playing that Time Walk, taking an extra turn. And that means he's really ahead of mana, although he doesn't seem to find his third land here. And there is... Okay, this is pretty sweet. There is the Urnum Jin, so that's actually pretty problematic here. Um, I mean, I can attack still, and he's got, he has to discard a card. Only two in hand, though. Um, let's see which one. Sylvan! Ooh, that is pretty painful for my opponent, but can I... Okay, at least I can play a land playing a Demonic Tutor... Am I going to look up for removal here? Am I going to go for that Ashes to Ashes? There is a risk though. If I go for Ashes to Ashes and he uses his... Yeah, that's what he does. He uses his Strip Mine here. Probably taking care of my Bayou. Then I'm not sure if I have enough mana. So I, I wonder what I picked. Oh, this is actually quite nice. It's only two cards though, but it's pretty good for the Brain Geyser. You know, kind of refilling his hand, but he doesn't have a blocker though for the hippie, so he's going to lose a card instantly again. So it's not ideal, but I guess, I mean, it's better than not playing it, or else he would have lost it anyway. I, and again, he's kind of tough luck losing his regrowth, and I guess this is the card that I, I looked for. The Sylvan Library, so I'm hoping that, oh, Disenchant, ay ay ay, that's not great. I mean, it's good for my opponent, but... Ugh, I was really hoping that I could use that Sylvan to kind of find useful cards here because I'm already on 12 and uh, the situation is getting a little problematic here for me. I need something against... Okay, okay, I've got a Crumble at least for one of his mana sources. Dark Ritual and then an Ice Storm for another mana source. And I guess I'm going to attack... Maybe I should have attacked before, because then, you know, who knows, maybe he would have blocked on his birds, and it would have been an even bigger problem for him mana-wise. Um, land number four, attacking again. Look at my life total, though. I'm on eight, and I'm now going to go down to four. Things are not looking great for me. Untapping. Finding a bayou. I guess I've got a creature because I'm attacking here, so he's going to 10. And I'm playing, okay, this is pretty good. Evil Eyes is actually a 3-6, so it's a great blocker for the Urn of Jin. My opponent has no cards in hand, so I am still alive. I'm still in this game. Passing turn here, Urn gets untapped. There's a City of Brass, that's not going to make a big change here. He is going to attack though, um, and I guess I'm just going to block here. Remember, I cannot attack with the Hypnotic Spectre because of my Evil Eyes. So actually, the Evil Eyes is, is not great on blocking Judy here. Uh, I can't even consider... Okay, there is a Sinkhole. I could even consider just attacking and then... Sacking my... Hippie to block his Urnum? I mean, why not? 
the hypnotic specter is not really doing anything right now. Drawing another card, just passing turn here, and I'm not really liking the way this game is going. I'm just giving my opponent way too many options here to get back from this standstill situation. I force of nature. Ho oh, ho. Okay, well, at least if I die, I die because of a force of nature. That's not too bad. That's a classy way to go. Maybe I can... I wish, I'm just giving my opponent too much too much time here. And here you can really see Evil Eyes and Hypnotic Spectre not working out at all. What can I do here? I was looking at my graveyard. Maybe I've got a regrowth in hand. I mean, this is tricky. Attacking, so I guess I've got something. And he's going to drop to 7. And I'm going to play Dark Ritual. And, okay, I'm going to kill myself here with the Ashes to Ashes. <laughs> so that's it. They're really, that's, of course, the downside of Ashes to Ashes. is you take 5 damage as a great card, but you do need enough life. So I think when I'm looking at this deck, I think I need um, a Drain Life. I just need a Drain Life, at least. And I think also Paralyze would do really well with the Land Removal Plan. Anyway, it is 1-1 one, one now. So it's a win for Super Enchantress here in game number 2. Let's go to game a three. Game number three, one, one here. And who will prevail? Will it be my deck, Evil Storm, or will it be Super Enchantress who will take the victory here? And um, it's really nice to see kind of an Enchantress deck working, you know. Um, I think that what, he, what he's basically done is he said, you know, I'm not going to revolve it completely around Enchantress. When I have Enchantress, it's great, but if I don't have it, it's also fine. Uh, okay, it looks like I'm taking a mulligan, by the way. Starting here with a bite. Are you really? Okay, this is kind of silly. So, three games in a row, I'm starting Dark Ritual Hypnotic Spectre. So, I mean, that is kind of silly because I don't even play with four Dark Rituals. So, and there we see <laughs> a really nice answer by my opponent. Look at this. Balance turn one, and because of that Mox Sapphire and Soaring is actually pretty good. He has to discard only one card from his hand. I mean, wow. What what a cool start here from both sides of the table. I'm playing a crumble here on the Sol Ring, of course, being afraid of that early Urn of Jin that, I, that I've also seen, I believe, in both games. And there is a Wild Grove over the other Savannah. So that means he's, he has a lot of mana playing a Regrove. What am I going to do? I'm actually taking back my crumble and taking care of his only blue source. Okay, okay. And he's playing a Tropical Island here passing turn. So the blue source is back. That happens so often when I make a decision to take out a specific land or a specific uh, a color mox. And then my opponent's like, okay, fine. I'm just playing the dual land with that color, whatever. I guess I'm lucky, by the way, that my opponent is not finding his Urnimus uh, or a Force of Nature. I think he can play a Force. Oh, man, I shouldn't have said that. There we see a beautiful signed force of nature, by the way, but uh, oh no. I mean, this is bad news for me, and I think my deck really needs some more creature removal when I look at that, when I look at these games here. A lot of glare, by the way. Oh wow! Taking eight damage here with the spirit link on the force of nature. I think this is gonna be a really, really short game, because I mean, I can't really do anything against this. Attacking for three. I mean, I need creature removal. Come on. A terror maybe from the sideboard, please? Can we have that? Or main. Actually, I'm playing two main. Oh, my goodness. And, of course, he's not play, uh, paying the upkeep cost because he's taking eight damage first. And because of the spirit link, he gains eight damage afterwards. Um, he can attack me again, so I'll drop to four here. Unless I have a terror, I do not. I'm going to go to four. What I can say is... We had really nice games in game one and game two, and game three is, uh, well, it's cool to see somebody win with a force, but um, it would have been nice if I could have, if I could have given some more of a, of, of, a, of a game here, of a fight back, I guess, what I'm trying to say. And It's his turn, I'm on four life, I think we're going to die. I am tapping something or not? Okay, I'm untapping again. I think I already passed turn. Yeah, so it's my opponent's turn here. And in his turn, I am playing... <laughs> Yay! A Storm Seeker. Oh, man. 
that uh, doesn't really make uh, make a dent here. So Stormseeker, that means um, that Yoop has won this one with his Super Enchantress deck. Congratulations, Yoop. And um, we actually played this game a while back, like I said, in the introduction as well. And um, the cool thing is, or the interesting thing is, I've actually tinkered my black and green deck a lot. And I'm now playing with Paralysis, which worked really, really well with the land removal plan. That is one of the many differences that I've made in my black and green deck. I still like the evil eyes, I still like the uh, land removal package and, and in combination with crumble, so I like that as a base. But around that I've kind of restructured my deck. Anyway, enough about my deck. Congratulations to Euplifis Super Enchantress. It is a beautiful, beautiful card. Um, and I wanted to thank you all for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Now, if you want to support the channel, uh, you just did actually by watching this video. So thank you very much for that. And if you want to help Timmy Talks grow even further, you can leave uh, a comment that helps. Let me know what you think of these games. Let me know if you also have tried Enchantress and how that worked out for you. Let me know what you think of my deck and what tips you have for me. Um, also, um, you can share this video on your socials. You can like it. If you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. That really helps and it shows YouTube that you appreciate my channel and then you can help the channel grow. Uh, talking about helping us grow, you can also become a patron and you can sponsor the show financially. Uh, and you can do that by clicking on the link that's appearing right now and then you can visit the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Just have a look, maybe it's something for you. If not, then don't join, but maybe you like it and you can already support Timmy Talks for one dollar a month. Talking about supporters, let's go to the end scroll and let's check out the patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Ik het als vinkertje somber gezien.